This video covers the bronsted lowry acid base theory, which builds upon uh, our previous theory, which was modified Arrhenius. And through a certain lens, we can now see how, in fact, modified Arrhenius points to us that proton transfer was going on. If we understand bronsted lowry theory as being the movement of a charged particle, which in this case is a proton, then acids act like proton donors, and bases act like proton acceptors. In the uh, reaction that I have at the bottom, you'll notice that uh, ammonia, which is a known base, can be viewed as accepting a proton from water that we can show that way. And just as a simple notation, we can show protons just as being an H+. And in the other case, notice that there also is a proton transfer that takes place on the reactant side. Because these reactions are equilibria, it means that there is a forward proton transfer and a reverse proton transfer that occur. And when those transfers occur at the same rate, then you've actually reached equilibrium. So to show the proton transfer in the reverse direction, then we would have ammonium ion transferring to hydroxide ion. So in this case, it's pretty important for us to be able to go through and talk about bronsted lowry theory from the basis of certain definitions. In this case, uh, first obviously is what is a bronsted lowry acid? So an acid is always used as a proton donor. I've color coded these so I can state that both of the red substances are proton donors based on the arrows that I had shown in the previous slide. And we also need to be able to label bronsted lowry bases. So we'll identify the substances again in blue uh, as bases. Now every bronsted lowry reaction then is going to have two acids and two bases, which makes it a little bit hard to distinguish the reactants from the product. So by definition, the reactant acid and base will be the native acid and base. And then the substances that are produced that go through the reverse reaction, we refer to as conjugate acid and conjugate base. As a result, we get this other definition that pops up, which is the notion of a conjugate acid base pair. This is a set of chemicals that differ by one proton. Every bronsted lowry reaction has two conjugate acid base pairs. So notice that one of those is the ammonia uh, aqueous and paired off with a substance that differs by one proton, that would be ammonium ion. So that's one conjugate acid base pair. The other one would be water and hydroxide ion. Okay, so that's a fairly important definition for us to consider. Uh, in addition to that, we have the ability for a substance to be amphiprotic. This means that depending on the context, you have a substance that could either act like a proton donor or act like a proton acceptor. And we do have a substance in here that behaves that way, which is water, but it's difficult for us to view that behavior without looking at a table that I have on the next slide. Lastly, uh, we typically only transfer one proton from an acid to a base in these reactions. So we assume most of the time that these substances are monoprotic, but it is possible that depending on the structure, a substance could, given the opportunity, donate multiple protons as a polyprotic acid or accept multiple protons as a polyprotic base. And we can chart that behavior out on the table as well. So in here, this might be a little bit hard to see, but this is a condensed version of what's available in our data booklet. And the easiest way to recognize that something is a uh, amphiprotic substance is when you see that a substance like water appears both on the reactant side and the product side of the table. And in case this case, if you have a look through, you'll actually notice that there are quite a few substances that appear uh, on both sides of a table. Uh, another example of where you might see this is, for example, you might have the hydrogen sulfite ion. So HSO3 appears here and here. So those would be considered amphiprotic substances.
Now, the way to recognize if something is polyprotic, uh, let's say that we're looking for a polyprotic acid. In this case, you're looking to see if a substance largely has multiple protons to donate. So let's start with something easy like H3PO4. Simply based on the formula, you might imply that that is polyprotic. But the way to check that is to look to see if the conjugate appears somewhere farther down on the table as another acid, like so. Again, in this case, you can check to see if this appears farther down as another acid. So in this case, definitely H3PO4 is polyprotic. Now, we kind of have to be careful because there are cases where a substance could appear to have multiple protons, yet not all of them are acidic protons. So you might have a look at something like acetic acid and notice that uh, there are extra hydrogens in that molecule. But the easiest way to check for that is to see if the conjugate appears farther down on the list. In this case, it doesn't. And so we would assume that acetic acid is monoprotic. If you're looking at bases, you're dealing with this uh, by checking to see if the base can accept multiple protons. And simply by the formula, you could do that by looking to see if it has a multiple negative charge. It's not uh, standard by any means, but it's a nice little tip. So for example, CO3 two negative probably is a polyprotic base. But again, what we can do is check to see if its conjugate appears farther up on the table as a base. And certainly it does. See it right there. And that's a good way of checking. Okay. One of the other things that this table does for us, which I believe would have been covered in the previous course, is to talk a little bit about the structure, being that uh, the strongest acids on the table are listed way far up on the left, and the acids become weaker as you uh, go down. So in fact, if we look at it in this trend, we get an increasing strength of um, acid going in this direction. Our strongest base, which certainly in the bigger realm of things is, is not true, but the strongest base on this table is hydroxide ion. And if you think about the logic, the bases increase in strength as you move uh, downward on the base side of the table. So what we're going to do is uh, grab all this information and start to make Bronsted-Lowry predictions based on this. Some tips as far as this goes. We first need to observe the Arrhenius behavior for all these substances when we place them into water. So even though we are, in a sense, dismissing uh, the Arrhenius acid-base behavior, we still do have to acknowledge that, for example, ionic compounds that have appropriate solubility will in fact dissociate into water. And I'll show you that in the examples we have coming up. We also do acknowledge that strong acids completely ionize. And because I don't have an example of that coming up, I'll just suggest that if we had a reaction where you were told that hydrochloric acid was one of the entities in the structure, you would actually not list hydrochloric acid because once you place it into water, it actually completely breaks apart creating hydronium ion and chloride ion. So you would list those preferentially as your entities and then make your prediction based on that. Lastly, we have uh, something called an extent of reaction that is predicted. This goes along with all the stuff we've been doing with equilibrium, where we talk about predictions either favoring reactants or favoring products. Quite simply, if you have your acid and base in positions of strength, so your strongest acid and your strongest base are in this orientation on the table, then this favors the products. And if you have an orientation where your strongest acid and your strongest base are in this orientation, so I would call this in positions of weakness, then we would say that uh, this favors the reactants. So let's work through a couple of examples here. 
and see how this goes. If we just, again, this is kind of made up, uh, mixed uh, methanoic acid, which let's assume that that's already in water, uh, with a solution of sodium hypochlorite. First thing we have to do is get down all of our entities in this case. So recognizing that methanoic acid, which is here on the table, is a weak acid due to the fact that it's below the hydronium uh, cutoff there. Uh, when we list that, we will not break it apart. We will assume that it will hang out as the weak acid molecule largely. Okay. Um, now, as an acid, we assume that it's already dissolved in water, although the fact that the ionic compound is also in a solution implies that we have water in this mixture. Then, sodium hypochlorite is a high solubility ionic compound, and that's one that we should break apart. So we will take the sodium ion and the hypochlorite ion and list those. Okay, uh, now going through the list, I've already highlighted that methanoic acid is on the table on the left side, so I will label that as an acid just for notation. Uh, I know that water is on the list twice. Saw that a little bit earlier, so it's amphiprotic. So I will list that potentially as both an acid and a base, and we'll just check its behavior later. Sodium ion, you'll notice, neither acts like an acid nor a base, so we can leave that uh, as a spectator, and we'll just ignore it for this purpose. And then hypochlorite ion is on the basic side, so that would be listed there, and we'll label that as a base. Now, the purpose of a bronsted lowry reaction is to take the strongest acid in a mixture and react it with the strongest base in the mixture. So, since the strength of acid increased in this direction, I'm going to choose the acid that appears highest up on the table, which is the methanoic acid. I will list that as my first reactant. And check for the strongest base that's in the mixture to react it with. So the base strength increases as you go this way. And so the strongest base in the mixture is the hypochlorite ion. So we now predict our products. And there's a few different ways of doing this. The first and one based upon the theory is to physically move a proton from the acid to the base in this regard. And as a result, we could deduce that we have the uh, methanoate ion that is produced. And then due to the OCl minus or hypochlorite ion accepting the proton, we would make hypochlorous acid. The other way of doing this though, is to recognize that the products are the conjugates to the strongest acid and the strongest base. So notice that the methanoate ion is listed to the right of the strongest acid and the hypochlorous acid molecule is listed to the left of the hypochlorite ion. So either of those techniques would get you to products of this reaction. The last thing is to realize that you have a situation where your strongest acid is in a position of strength compared to the strongest base. Okay. And as a result, we have a product favored reaction. Just a reminder that for a reaction that's product favored, that can be symbolized by a greater than 50%. Okay. Let's try one more reaction here. Hydrosulfuric acid reacts with sodium benzoate. So similar kind of a setup here. The hydrosulfuric acid is a weak acid. So I'll just list that intact. Let's again assume that there's water in the mixture due to the presence of the acid or for fact that it says solution. Then we have sodium ion hanging around and benzoate ion. 
just a little tip if you saw the word benzoate and were frustrated by the fact that you don't see that information listed on the common name you can always go back to the a table of polyatomic ions and see if you can't find it there because very often there will be some hint as to what the molecule is there so looking through again we have hydrosulfuric acid only appearing on the uh, reactant side apologies on the acid side so we will show that as an acid uh, water shows up on both sides so it's a potential acid or base sodium again as a spectator benzoate acting like a base And now we find our strongest acid. This is going to be the one farthest up. And listed as our first reactant. Find strongest base, which is the one that's farthest down. Set as the other reactant. Transfer a proton between these two. So whichever technique, whether physically moving the proton or looking at the conjugates, you would predict that we would get hydrogen sulfide ion and benzoic acid and in this case notice that we have a situation in terms of extensive reaction where the strongest acid in the mixture is in a position of weakness compared to the strongest base so we would suggest that this reaction is reactant favored. In this case, symbolically, we could show that as a less than 50% reaction. Now, admittedly, these examples are a little bit repetitive, uh, but they do illustrate two major uh, distinctions, that being reactant or product favored reactions. Uh, so apart from them being maybe a little bit derivative, they should get you down the right path for figuring this out. Thanks for watching and hope you do okay with these types of questions.